I just want to briefly talk about the history of prison because I mentioned that you mm. know these things seem like they've been around um, for a long, long time. And we did an After Dark on this. We chatted a bit about good. it. Very good After Dark. You can access that if you go ahead and join up uh, to our Patreon by the end of the month. It will be up by the end of the month, yeah. is the point. Until the late 18th century, uh, this is from Britannica, prisons were used primarily for the confinement of debtors, persons accused of crimes and awaiting trial, and convicts awaiting the imposition of their sentences, usually death or transportation, um, or deportation overseas. So yep. imprisonment was rarely a sentence that was that was given. Uh, you know, it wasn't given out as a sent. It wasn't you know, oh you've done a bad thing, go to prison. Um, and even then, it was only for minor crimes. You'd put someone in jail for a bit, like oh you did a you did a bad. Go sit you in the naughty step for a bit. Exactly that sort of stuff. I mean, don't steal bread. Exactly that sort of stuff. Capital punishment started to decline. Um, and if you're not killing off all the people that are doing bad stuff, you have to keep them somewhere. I guess, and that that's kind of how prison became, you know, this um, th- this thing that we know as today. And that was towards the, the end of the 18th century. We're now in the 21st century, right? So it's only three centuries, <laughs> 300 years ish mm-hmm. that, uh, that that's gone from wow. you know uh, where we were then to where we are now. And obviously, that's a decrease decrease in capital punishment. That's got a lot to do with it, which is yeah. great, fantastic. But putting people in prison for indeterminate periods of time or for long periods of time, it's it's not necessarily mm a good option just because it's better than killing people a ton, right? So now imprisonment then became, you know, towards the end of the 18th century, as I said, became the the chief means of punishing serious offenders, Britannica is saying there. Um, And it then started to spread across the world. And then by um, the early 21st century, a majority of countries had abolished the death penalty in law and practice, and imprisonment was consequently the most severe form of punishment their courts could impose. Um, Now, you know, um, the sort of the idea of what prison is should be all of that sort of stuff developed over time, right? Like in the 16th century, um, in Europe, they built rehabilitation houses for like minor offenders and vagrants. Basically, if you were poor or homeless, they would put you in this in this place. Um, and they kind of focused on um, <laughs> work and personal responsibility. Kind of, you can see where prisons come out of that now. Um they would get ill because there was poor sanitation. Um, you know, uh, there's literally this thing called uh, jail fever, which was uh, typhus, uh, outbreaks of e- epidemic typhus known as jail fever occasionally killed not only prisoners, but also jailers and more rarely judges and lawyers involved in trials. Um, and then in the late 18th century, as I said again, um, modern prison developed uh, in part as a reaction to the conditions of local jails at the time. So the way that jails were kind of informed how prison ended up being because it evolved in response to that um but what i guess what i hope you can kind of see from this here is that prison wasn't always sort of the punishment it was capital punishment uh, for a long long time you know along with um deportation and a few other things right now those things aren't good prison also isn't good though. Mm-hmm. just because we're not killing people doesn't mean that it's it's a huge amount better i mean literally from this you can see in 16th century people were dying from poor sanitation um and that's not Hugely different now. People still die from poor sanitation in prisons. Um, and the emergence of the sort of penitentiary is, is the next sort of a part of that um, Britannica article, which I thought was really interesting. Um, because penitentiary, obviously, a place you know, to be punished or, um, you know, uh, or personal reform, it says there. Now, Jeremy Benth- Bentham, who we've spoken about before on the podcast, he is the guy that, um, I think, has founded my university. I've seen his head stuffed. Ah, uh, yes. And his body stuffed. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Did, well, yeah, the guy probably. with the hair chart, like with all the different hairs. Was that Jeremy? I think that might have Maybe. been. Maybe. Who knows? Look, he was a good, he was a philosopher. I might have just libeled Jeremy Bentham. Look him up. It's fine. He's dead, okay? He's stuck. Ah, you can, go yes. and look, you can you literally go and look at him. dead, Corey. <laughs> so uh, he had a hand in this, right? The sort of idea for convict prisons. Um, and then in the early 19th century, penitentiaries were established in um, Pennsylvania and New York. Um, and this new type of prison started to spread, you know, sort of across the world. Um, they they then started to experiment with different kinds of rehabilitation. They thought, do you know what's real good? Um, personal responsibility. Let's put people by themselves so they can think about what they did. Boom, he got some solitary confinement, but which is good. I don't, that, and does I mean, not have any negative health impacts whatsoever. There's a leap of logic there. Personal responsibility. 
therefore, let's put you in a cage and make you on your own. That doesn't. That's not what personal responsibility is. <laughs> Nobody's personally responsible. We exist in a society with an economy, and we look after each other, and we work for each other, and we make products for each other. That's not what personal responsibility is. It Shut up, you're wrong. It, it literally says here, <laughs> solitary confinement of criminals came to be viewed as ideal because it was thought that solitude would help the, the offender to become penitent, and that penitence would result in rehabilitation. So basically, if you sit by yourself, you'll feel bad about it. It's the naughty step. Sure. It's the naughty step. Yeah. 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 It's literally that. But, but did adults. that work? Did people become penitent? Sometimes they maybe did, but... I mean, if it worked, would we still have prisons now? <laughs> Increasing in population? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, probably. Well, the trouble is there's always new people. And are those people, new people born penitent? I guess I guess they're not. <laughs> so keep putting them on the naughty step forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and look, I mean, I just want to briefly touch on the psychology of prison. I've spoken there a little bit about um, solitary confinement. I, I don't need to go too deeply into this. You can Google solitary confinement and basically all you'll find is articles and papers and any number of things, blog posts even, about how, f- not going to swear, about go, how bloody just makes bad you it go is. mad. Yeah. Like, because... for want of a better word, I know it's not a good word to use, but it just makes you go mad. That's what it does. Yeah. I mean, putting someone doesn't make by you themselves... Penitent, it makes you go not well. Yeah. I mean, putting someone by themselves for an extended period of time is going to mess with them because people are not supposed to do that. Yeah. We're social beings. Yeah. It's a form of torture. <laughs> um, not not cool, man. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, but hey, if you do if you do bad thing, all your rights get taken away at the, at the whim of the state. So, you know, um, don't do bad thing, I guess. And the state won't rescind your rights. I'm sort of struck by the, something you said in the opening, which was like, it's talking about the history of prisons and how long prisons have been around for. And like, if you if you were to plot a graph, right, and you got your first graph point is maybe like three thousand years ago, or two thousand years ago, where we have like an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Someone steals from you, you steal from them. Someone murders your family member, you murder their family member, right? That was like stage one of humanity, right? Mm-hmm. We were just sort of fighting each other. Then stage two is like, okay, well, we'll sort of, okay, we'll we'll apprehend that person and we'll sort of give them a sort of trial site type thing and then we'll either kill them or put them somewhere really far away. Mm-hmm. That's stage two, right? Stage three is then like, okay, we'll apprehend that person, we'll have a complex criminal justice system and we'll put them in a box somewhere. That's stage three. That's where we are now. So like, what's stage four? What is the next, if you were to draw a line between those points on that graph, where is the next place? Um, like where that is obviously where we are going. We don't want to go back, the majority of us, to mm-hmm. those stage one and stage twos. Um, we're currently in stage three. Stage and, and stage one and stage two are also not effective either no. because we ended up at stage three. So where's stage four? What does that system look like? Abolition. Uh, yeah, possibly, but also <laughs> just a, a more holistic like structuring of our society. I, I- Oh, yeah, holistic and evidence-based. Yes, absolutely. I think that's the main thing. That's that, the main that, issue. That, to me, is the, the bridge there. When you say evidence-based, when you've said, get like we need to move away from this kink for punishment, I think that some people think punishment, great, mm, yes, love mm. punishment. So, first... The first one, before we get to like getting rid of punishment or like or getting rid of like yeah, I love a punishment is does punishment actually work? Yeah. Like does it actually work? Um, otherwise it's just your kink. Yeah. And you need to recognize if it works, then we can then have a conversation about that. Oh, absolutely. And is yeah. it more effective than other things? Are there or things that are more effective than punishment? Punishment is one strategy to make world better place. Mm-hmm.